Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be trying to make the roof for the charger. Once again, the last time I tried to make the roof, I had quite a few issues. So the first issue I had, I was trying to spray the gel coat with my gel coat gun, which has a six mil tip. Usually that is okay for gel coat, uh, a clear gel coat, but this gel coat is all quite a bit thinner. It's supposed to use a 2.2 millimeter tip. So to resolve that issue, I ordered a new paint gun. It has a 2.2 millimeter tip. Shouldn't have any issues there. The second issue I had was with the mold. Not technically with the mold, but I used plasticine to fill in the flanges. And when I did that, it just had a, had a leak, had a vacuum leak. That's, that's one downside with a two piece mold. And the kind of the downside with vacuum bagging parts is having a leak. There's always the chances that if you have plasticine or whatever filling the flange that it could get sucked out by the vacuum, which is what happened on both of these flanges on both sides in the back. And it just, it just gave me, gave me a big headache because I tried to try to seal it as it was sucking the resin in. And by the time, you know, by the time everything was said and done, it was, it wasn't going to seal. So to resolve that issue, I'm going to use silicone instead of the plasticine. I think that'll work quite a bit better because I can pretty much run a bead on this flange, stick the flange in there, bolt it together. I don't think I'll have any more issues with that. And then I could pretty much run my finger across the edge and get that nice and smooth all the way down. And it'll be a lot quicker than the plasticine was. Also, another issue I had was when I was mixing the resin, I had a hardener that was supposed to, la supposed to last an hour and 45 minutes. It ended up hardening in the pot in I think like 45 to 50 minutes, minutes, which was an issue. So I ordered a lot longer hardener. This one has two and a half hours of work time, which, you know, this is a very large part. This is a very large roof. I think that'll be perfect. So another thing that I did was I got in contact, actually the guy from Black, Black Ops Auto Works got me in contact with the guy that makes all his composite parts and he makes all their hoods, all their stuff. So he gave me quite a few pointers. He watched my video. And I think what I'm gonna do, so when I first vacuum bagged it, I had my line running along the edge, all the way up here on the sides. And as you saw, it didn't really wet the center part out. And I think one of the reasons other than the pot hardening and in not having any more resin was that this is a large area to span for the tubing. So what I'm gonna do is have my resin pull from the center right here. I'm gonna have the spiral tubing run all the way down both flanges on both sides, which gives me a lot shorter distance for it to wet out. So it'll be wetting out from here forward and on the sides on both sides. Then on the front, I'll be pulling vacuum from the front. He recommended me making a break. So what a break is, is pretty much you don't want the resin to come up and then start filling the vacuum line. Even if you have a catch pot to catch the extra resin from getting into your pump because then it's not really pulling any more vacuum on the part. So what you do with a brake is you pretty much have the bleeder fabric. So you have the carbon fiber fabric, the peel ply, then you have a layer of bleeder and then you don't. So what I'm gonna do is pretty much end the bleeder right here. So if these sides, which there'll be the spiral tubing pretty much all the way, probably to about here, I'll stop it. And this spiral tubing will pretty much wet this out right here instantly. So it'll come up, it'll go with the path of least resistance, wet this out. And if I just had bleeder all the way across, it would just go directly and never wet the center out. So the reason you make a break, which I'll probably have the break up to here, which is a very good, good distance because I won't have to worry about it not wetting this out because it's still gonna be pulling vacuum on it. But once I get resin to here, it's gonna pretty much slow this resin down. So then I'll have time to catch up from the center because it'll be wetting out kind of in a V shape, I'm guessing, all the way forward. And then the resin will finally be able to catch up. Once it finally catches up, then it'll start to pull the resin up on this flange. And I think that'll just 
make it a lot easier. So now what I'm gonna do is clean up the mold. So I have some mold cleaner. I'm gonna clean the whole mold. Then I'm going to reseal the mold. After I reseal the mold, I have some mold release. I'll reseal the mold in mold release. Then I could put silicone on the flanges put the flanges on, bolt them on, and then we could get ready to start. Actually, I'll have to wait a day because you have to wait a day for the silicone to dry because if you, the resin will actually react with the silicone if it's not dry and it'll just just destroy the resin for some, for some reason or another. It's, it's what happens, so I have to make sure that's dry for a day. The mold is now back in the paint booth and what I ended up doing was I applied silicone. So I did that yesterday and let it dry for a day. So you don't want the silicone to be wet because it will react with the gel coat and it will also react with the resin negatively. So it will just pretty much ruin your part. So letting it set up for a day is a very good plan. So what I ended up doing was I then went and spread all that off and then got all the excess off and then I reapplied mold release so it is ready to go. So what I'm gonna do now is mix up the gel coat, spray the gel coat in the mold, and I'm gonna use that new paint gun that I got, the 2.2. I let the gel coat dry overnight. It is dry to the touch. What I need to do is clean up these flanges so I could, before last time, I actually had the uh, some tape over this. I should have done that this time. I actually forgot to do it, but it comes off pretty easy. So I'm gonna wipe it off and then put the bagging tape on and then I can put the layers of carbon fiber. I decided I'm gonna do four layers of carbon, so I'll do one layer of the 3K carbon Kevlar, then another layer of just carbon, then the Soric, and then two more layers of the 3K carbon.
So last night I vacuum bagged the roof once again and I'm not exactly sure what happened. I'm not sure if it is gonna be bad or if it's not. It fully wetted out. We're good with the, I'm pretty sure it fully wetted out. This spot right here had me with some concern right there. But uh, when I was vacuum bagging it, it pretty much got um, pretty much all wetted out and then it stopped sucking resin in. I'm not, it's almost like it lost vacuum pressure, but the gauge on the vacuum canister read 25 HG, negative 25 HG. So I'm not sure what was going on. I couldn't find a vacuum leak. I literally went over the whole thing, listening for a vacuum leak, just in a kind of a panic because I, you know, I have so much time in this roof invested, especially just this one. I worked all week setting this roof up. So, uh, you know, I didn't want to have any issues. If I do have an issue with this roof this time, I'm really getting tired of making carbon fiber pieces, but I am going to still make a carbon fiber roof. But I think instead of running the vacuum bagging like this with the tape on here, I'll put some stuff on the edges just so it's puncture free and I'll just run a vacuum bag around the whole part or the whole mold just so I could eliminate any vacuum leaks that I could have. I'll put some stuff around these edges so it can't cut the bag. Uh, another issue with this bagging material that I had was it wasn't wide enough so I actually had to splice in half and half. So that's not really that desirable because you don't want anything on top of the piece because it could lead to tracing. I guess we'll just see when we pop it out of the mold. I'm just kind of kind of excited to see and kind of worried that, you know, it might be it might not have it, it might be messed up. I'm not I'm not exactly sure. So, let's get this thing out and just kind of go from there. I know it's an experience. I'm used to doing really really small parts like, you know, um like the RB cam cover and stuff like that, which is very, very easy. And uh, you know, the FC fan shroud, which is a little bit larger than I'm usually used to, but it's a single piece mold. This is just a whole nother animal. Um, I did have a leak over here, but I, uh, I actually fixed it before I started the vacuum bagging process. So I'm 100% sure that before I started the process, I didn't have any leaks and I couldn't find a leak when it lost, it stopped sucking in resin and there's still resin full in the pot. So, and the pot wasn't hard. So I'm not sure what happened, but I guess this is just a, an experience and a, a learning experience. So let's get this thing out and look what we got. Hopefully it's good. If it's not, we'll just try again. I've already ordered supplies to redo it because I'm out of, um, I'm out of carbon fiber fabric. So I will need more supplies. So that if this is bad, I'll start working on painting the engine bay finishing that wing up, I need to paint that wing. Um, you know, get all these last little details, get the interior probably, the pieces I'm gonna paint painted. And uh, really, I can't get the car painted until I have the roof done, but I could seal it, because I wanna have it in sealer. So this whole side right here is good. This side over here just needs another high build prime, and then a block out, and then this will be ready. I could get this in 320 and then get it sealed as well, and then we'll be ready with that, and then I've been working on the hatch too. So making some progress, it's just, it's just really time consuming and slow, which is why I haven't had videos out, but let's get this part out. Was able to pull the part out of the mold. The mold is still good. I need to clean it up and get it ready to go once again, but there's a few issues that I had that I'm gonna note right now for next time for experience and for anybody that's watching. So I used silicone to pretty much close that gap, but for some reason it didn't dry all the way. So an issue with silicone not drying all the way is that it reacts with the resin and I have these white spots right here in the resin, which is not, not good and it's probably weak. Another thing is I have a dry spot for some reason or another, like I said, I'm not sure what happened. It stopped sucking resin in, but it still had vacuum on it. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Other than this one little spot that I cannot do anything about, I can't do anything about getting that fixed. So, um, because there's gel coat on the top, there's, uh, there's resin on the backside. I'm not sure why it's dry. So, 
I'm just, I've already ordered this stuff. Like I said, it's gonna probably be a week till it gets here. So I'm gonna end up doing, I'm probably gonna paint the engine bay, get the interior stuff ready and painted, and uh, maybe Raptor line or lizard skin. I'll have to figure out what I'm gonna order until the next stuff for the roof. I'll also get the mold ready. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna do it a different way. Instead of running the vacuum bagging tape along the edge, I'm just gonna put a bag around the whole part so I don't have to worry about any finding any leaks, it'll be a lot easier and uh, et cetera. So that being said, I guess it's just a little bit um, disappointing that roof number two didn't come out as I expected it to, but it's a, it's a learning experience. Like I said before, I haven't done parts as large before and uh, it's just it's just one of those things you have to pay to you got to pay to play. So let's uh, let's get the mold back ready. I'll probably end the video pretty quick here. I want to get this thing trimmed up. What I'm going to do is trim this thing up. It's it's all the flanges and everything are good, um, and then set it on the the car just so I could get an idea of what it's going to look like, and uh, then I'll just have this whole roof for something i mean it looks good you can see the car in it it's not 100 percent glossy because the mold isn't 100 percent glossy and i planned on clearing it anyway but it does look good Now that we have the car outside, I threw the roof, or Josh helped me put the roof on the car just to see the fitment. You can see that dry spot right there. So I did order more material, like I said, to redo this thing, but I really do like the carbon slash blue Kevlar. I like how it looks. It just, inside it looked black, kind of gray, but outside, I mean, it's just, look at that. Look at that. You can just see the blue carbon or the blue Kevlar. And uh, it's a little bit dull right now because it's not, it's just out of the mold. Once I clear it, it's gonna look super, super glossy. Uh, if I actually spray some wax and grease on there, it just kind of brings it to, to what it's gonna look like. Look at that. So once it's cleared, it'll look a lot clearer. And uh, yeah, we'll have this carbon roof done in the, uh, the next couple weeks. But I'm, I'm glad this one, came out how it did it just gave me a chance to give it a nice test fit i trimmed everything up just uh to see where i needed to cut it 
Um, it has a clamp on there, everything fits. The thickness seems to be, you know, three layers of carbon. Seems like it gives it enough strength with the, uh, the reinforcement inside of it, that honeycomb structure. So I think we're good. Three, three layers, I'll do three layers on the hatch and uh, the wing, everything will match. It'll just be really cool. So can't wait to get this redone. And then once we have the other one redone, I'll be able to paint this. But in the next video, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually paint the engine bay just so I can get this thing painted and probably get some stuff ready in the interior because I do wanna have some things painted in here, but I'm also going to go ahead and use some sort of sound deadening slash heat barrier as a uh, like a undercoating and in the interior. But I'm gonna end the video here. If you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, throw a thumbs up, throw a comment below. As always, see you guys next time.